Hello, everyone. I'm just giving a little bit of time for um, people to come in, but we're excited that you're joining us. Hello, hello, everyone. everyone. I'm just giving, I'm just giving a little time. bit of time. We're excited that you're joining us. Hello, hello, everyone. Okay, hopefully you all can't hear the echo anymore, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm going to give a brief introduction of our wonderful guests for today, um, and then we'll get right into it. So thank you for joining us on the, hi, <laughs> thank you for joining us on um, the YouTube channel for ABSI. Um, we usually have webinars every so often and we're kind of getting back into it. So we thought that this one would be a perfect one to have, especially for students around the time of finals and just, um, you know, the end of the year coming up and everything. So we hope that you enjoy it. Um, and then at the end, I'll be making just a couple of announcements of upcoming uh, events that we have. So I'm gonna get into introducing Omi. Say hey, Omi. Greetings, everyone. Um, so this is Omi, Omi Kunle Ekundayo. She is um, an ABSI member, loyal ABSI member. She <laughs> got her master's in community mental health from FAMU. I'm sure there's some FAMU people on here right now supporting you. Um, she is the founder, executive director, and creative director for um, the Omi Wally Center, and um, she'll talk a little bit about that as you know she's presenting too. Um, she's a mental health therapist right now. She's based in New York, and she does a lot with like natural medicine um, and healing practices based in uh, Ifa religion. And I'll give her a chance to talk about that. Um, just want to point out, uh, some of you are already using the chat box, but definitely as we're kind of going along, uh, make sure that you are sharing your questions in the chat box. And um, I'll be keeping track of those. And also at some point, Omi's going to be asking you all to just um, interact with her. And so put your responses in the box as well. Uh, and I'll be monitoring those and kind of like relaying it to her so that we can keep it interactive and um, lively. And also, yeah, just let me know if, if anything happens on your end, if you all can't hear anything or see anything um, and I'll try to fix it from my end. Let's see. Mm. Just making sure that. So as Robina said, I am Omi Kunle, also known as IC3. Um, I graduated from family. Very, very proud of that. We are very proud people. <laughs> so for any of my guests on the call, thank you for being here. Um, so yes, my master's degree is in community psychology. I'm currently a first year doctoral student at Saybrook University studying mind body medicine um, with a specialization in integrative mental health. So that's pretty much what the Omi Wiley Center is. It is a, it's not a physical location yet, still building, still working towards that. But it is a space that you can come to via, um, you can do phone consultations or there are uh, virtual spaces on Facebook and Instagram and just other social media outlets that we'll talk about later on where you can um, just join in and be a part of to um, engage in soul care practices that range from Qigong to yoga, breath work. Uh, but Omi Wali, the ethos of is rooted in self-help, that we are all healers and that we all have the capability to heal ourselves. And so that's pretty much what we're going to talk about today uh, throughout the presentation and workshop. 
and I really hope that it's beneficial to everyone in some way, shape, or form. So if it's all good, Robina, I would love to get started. Okay. All right, I'm going to move closer because you guys know I'm soft-spoken, so I hope my volume is okay. Um, and I'll try to talk a little bit louder as well. Just let me know if I need to speak up. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and put the presentation in presentation mode. Robina, can you just let me know if I can get started with the slide? I'm not sure if you if you all can see the um the presentation, the PowerPoint. Go ahead and share your um, screen just so that you can put the put the oh, okay put it up. Mm -hmm. Let me know if this is working. Good to go? All righty. Yeah, perfect. Okay. All righty, so let's just jump right into it. Again, my name is Omikunle Ekundayo, um, coming to you from the Omiwali Center, and thank you so much for joining us. So the purpose and overview of the presentation is just to discuss the truth that we all have the potential to heal ourselves and to heal others. So throughout this workshop, we'll be using some of the oldest and best known practices um, for well-being, being mental and spiritual practices. So we will also be reviewing mindfulness from a energetic perspective because I just don't know how to separate the two now that I've learned what I have learned. So energy. Energy is a subtle electromagnetic force that permeates everything in the entire universe. It is what connects us to everything and it's called many, many different things across the world. Um, it's called chi in China, prana in India. We call it vibes around the way. We may call it the Holy Ghost or spirit while we're in church. Um, and we know scientifically that energy can be neither created nor destroyed. And so we're going to be, we will be striving to transform so-called negative thoughts and energy and stressful reactions into positive thoughts uh, throughout the workshop today, or what we call changing the story or our, or our perspective. Okay, and we'll talk more about changing the story in a couple of slides. So the mind and mindfulness. The mind plays a dominant role in the health of our body. And thoughts are the chief manipulator of our energy or our life force. So positive thinking, it creates a positive state of life force and a, and a positive um, energy within our body. And likewise, negative thinking will do the same, creating this negative state of life force and or energy. And so nothing happens without energy. Every thought that we have, every breath that we take, all the activities that we engage in, they're all being carried out by our life force energy. And with that, our energy is controlled by our thoughts. For example, if you were to close your eyes right now, wherever you are, if, if you could just close your eyes and just try to recall the most joyful experience that you can remember, where you were the happiest the happiest. You might notice that you feel yourself smiling internally or even externally. You might feel butterflies. You might feel tingling sensations throughout your body. So when we ask ourselves if we can make ourselves feel good or bad at will, 
I would answer yes, based on the experience that some of you may have just had. Um, and so through practice and discipline, I believe that we can reprogram our responses with peace, you know, Repro reprogram responses to difficulties or stressful situations with, if not peace, neutrality, you know, just not even giving it a reaction. So next, I want to talk a little bit about stress. We talked about a little bit about stress in the previous slide, but stress has um, stressful experiences has been um, established as major causes of illness by overwhelming evidence. This is not anything new, and stress is a common experience for people who are well. Um, it can be common for them to become ill after having a stressful experience, and so with that. Soul care, soul care is just so, so critical um, to, our sh to our overall um, health. And so energy, when it's not moved properly throughout, of our, um, throughout the body, it can be stored. So if we don't transform stress into something positive, that's when we have these uh, recurring sicknesses, maybe fibroids or hypertension. And so, as we talked about earlier, energy can be neither created nor destroyed. So our goal is to transform that energy properly, properly so that we can facilitate healing within our body, our spirit, and our mind. Um, and before we move any further, I definitely just wanted to do a energy exercise um, so that we can have direct experience with this thing called energy or life force. Many of us on the call may know or have direct experience with it through energy healing or Reiki or meditation, but some people, they actually have never felt their energy. So I thought that this would be a very empowering exercise. Uh-oh, here we go. A very empowering exercise for those of us um, who have never been able to feel their energy or haven't tried. So wherever you are, if you could, just take your hands together as if you're cold and just rub them together. Rub your hands together vigorously. And as you continue to rub your hands together, as you continue to rub your hands together, I invite you to close your eyes and take a deep breath in. As you breathe out, separate your hands. And slowly separate your hands. And as you breathe in, try to push your hands together. You might feel some sort of resistance. It might feel like a block or a wall of energy is in between your hands. For some of us, your hands may be continuously moving apart because your chi is strong and you work with your energy. And let's try that again. So again, you're gonna just rub your hands together. Taking a deep breath in and slowly separating your hands. As you breathe out, and try to slowly bring your hands together, and you should be able to feel some resistance there. If you are able to feel some sort of energy, I would love to just just see some sort of thumbs up in the uh in the chat just let myself or robina know that that's something that you were able to have success with um so yeah being able to experience your energy direct directly my first time experiencing it i just felt powerful um and i just think that generating your energy and working with your energy um is just so incredibly powerful powerful and can be so transformative um, throughout your practices. So I hope that that was, uh, was 
invigorating for those of you who who were able to feel your energy. And if you didn't, just continue to work at it. That just means that you should continue to do this practice. Well, we all have life force. If you are here listening to this uh, presentation and breathing and eating, you have life force energy. You have ashe, and um, and just continue to work at that. So the next energy exercise is something that we call alternate spinal breathing. Um, and this activity is done to generate or invigorate your life force energy. So if you are feeling tired, this is a really great exercise that you can do. Or if you're someone who done the previous exercise, you were not able to feel your energy. Um, this is one of those exercises that um, quickly generates your, your life force energy. So wherever you are, if you are laying down, if you're sitting in a chair, I just invite you to be comfortable. Um, your hand should be facing upward. And if you feel inclined to, I invite you to close your eyes and bring your attention to the base of your spine and inhale. As you inhale, imagine energy going into the base of your spine, traveling up the back, through your neck, and out of the crown chakra, out of the top of your head. Next, I would like for you to breathe in, imagining that energy traveling back into your body through the top of the head, traveling all the way down to the base of the spine, entering the same way that it came in. So next, take a deep breath in, hold the breath, and imagine that energy traveling through up the spine, the neck, dancing around in your crown, in your and you release and imagine that energy leaving the top of the head, the crown chakra. Breathe in. To the base of the spine, holding the breath, imagining that energy traveling up the spine, through the neck, dancing around your Lee, your head, your crown chakra, and leaving the top of your head. Imagine that energy traveling into the top of your head. As you breathe in and hold the breath, that energy is traveling back down the spine and exiting the base of the spine. Let's do it just two more times. Imagining that energy traveling in to the base of the spine, traveling up the spine, past your neck, dancing around your crown, your head, your Oli, and weaving through the middle of your head. Taking a deep breath in, imagine that energy traveling into the top of the head. Hold the breath, and that energy should be traveling back down the spine, through the neck, down the spine leaving the base of the spine. One more time, let's make it our best. Imagine that energy traveling in to the base of the spine, traveling up the spine, through the neck, dancing around your head, your Oli, and leaving the top of the head as you release the breath. Taking another deep breath in. Hold the breath. Imagine that energy traveling through the top of the head. Dancing down the spine and exiting through the base of the spine. 
So that is what we call advanced spinal breathing. And um, that is just an activity that you can do to invigorate or enliven your life force energy whenever you need to. Um, I just wouldn't recommend doing it before going to sleep because it might be tough for you to go to sleep when you when you do an activity like that. Any chi, I guess, invigorating activities um, such as like qigong or yoga or similar breath works can be, um, yeah, it can be tough to try to go to sleep or uh, or anything like that afterwards. So I hope that you enjoyed that. And that, again, that is what we call advanced spinal breath. Okay. Alrighty. <clears throat> so I hope that you can hear me now. My mind usually goes into a very soft-spoken place <laughs> when I'm doing um, any type of guided meditation. So I hope that you can hear me now. Next, we are going to transition into mindfulness. <clears throat> so, mindfulness. So, we, I would like to begin the conversation um, of mindfulness with this idea of becoming the witness or changing the story. We talked about that a little bit earlier. So, witnessing starts with this very simple process of individual thoughts and labeling them as to their nature. And then the last thing that you would do is just let go of any clinging to those thoughts. For example, if you have um, a thought maybe around doubt, maybe you are doubting your ability to successfully complete a task. When that thought comes up, the what you can do in response to that is label that thought as not useful. So this thought comes up like, man, I'm not feeling confident in my abilities to complete this task. When that thought comes up, label it as not useful and just so let that thought roll by like a wave. When you have just any thoughts that are just coming to you that are just not useful to your person, just let those thoughts roll by like a wave and tell your person, speak to your spirit and say, this is just not useful. And just let that thought roll by. So don't cling to it and um, begin to have that internal conversation. Yeah, I can't do it because of this and that and whatever. Just, this is not useful. This is not helpful to my goals, to me actualizing whatever it is that I'm trying to accomplish. I'm moving on. So that's one way that you can do it. So basically negative thoughts and illusions, they can only control our emotional reactions and our thoughts when we are not aware of them. So when we notice them and we label them as not useful thoughts, we can deal with those thoughts in more positive and useful ways. So we're transforming those energies. So see your thoughts honestly. Um, and just be, this is just this, this process of becoming the witness is not about being negative um, with yourself or passing judgment or your, on yourself or maybe even calling yourself negative. In truth, it's really just a process of honestly labeling um, your thought patterns for what they are. Um, and so just try not to be guilt or experience guilt as you do this, because this is just a part of the healing journey and uh, reprogramming the spirit and the mind into positive thinking so that you can manifest the um, you can manifest the outcome that you would like. And yes, we can take a pause for the cause for some questions. I am okay with that. Hey. hey, sister, I'm ready for the question. Okay. okay. I think I can hear the echo on your end. Can I mute myself while you ask the question? I think it's, yeah, maybe mute yourself, actually. Okay. 
So someone just asked, uh, as you were talking about the thoughts that come into your mind when you're trying to practice mindfulness, do you hold on to do you hold on to the positive thoughts or do you allow them to pass as well? You can go ahead. Say that one more time, please. About the oh, I heard the question. I thought I just thought you. I was saying you can put yourself on the screen if you want um, to do. Okay. Thank you. I forgot that I could do that. <laughs> so um. So yeah, when you are trying to replace a negative thought with a positive thought. I would definitely allow my spirit to be full of that positive thought. Um, it can only help, especially because joy and peace and happiness, they are automatically healing states. So that is something that I would want to embrace. So I, I typically, in my own practice, um, I embrace those positive thoughts because it's just enriching. It's just enriching to, um, to my person. So I would allow those thoughts to just uh, marinate. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question, thanks for that question, um, Shania. Hopefully I see your name right. Um, David also has a question and he said, are there any resources that you have found to be helpful? So many, oh my goodness, yes. Um, so there's a really amazing book. It's called uh, Healing is in the Spirit. It's written by Ra'u Nefer Amen. Um, I can definitely uh, give the link to Robina. We maybe we can put it in the description so that you all can have access to purchasing it. But it is such a wonderful book. It comes with guided meditations, and it has this twenty-one day um, like mind detox that you go through to um, address different deficiencies within the spirit, and it just hits so many different things from your thoughts to your words to your physical health. It, it's, it's wonderful. Um, so this book is great for trying to maintain wellness. So uh, Healing is in the Spirit by Ra Unefer Amen. It's all beat up because I use it often. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I would also say align yourself with teachers who you trust, who you feel have um, some sort of ethical standards because not all people out there have good or great intentions. So if your spirit is, you know, guiding you or leading you towards someone who you know has information that you need, um, I would listen to that intuitive call um, and, uh, and learn from them and just stock knowledge. That's what my teacher, uh, he's one of the past presidents of ABSI, uh, Dr. Dana Denard, or we call him lovingly Baba Kamal. Um, he encourages us to just talk knowledge, do a lot of self-study, a lot of research. Uh, and that's one of the ways that I've learned many of what I've learned and just going to him and talking to him about it. Hey, what do you think about this? So just doing your own research and um, having a teacher for like that, tech, that check and balance. Like, what do you think about this? I read this. I'm unsure. So um, yeah, that's my number one book. And then finding an elder or a teacher in the community. Okay. Homie, I'm just gonna see if you can mute yourself and um, I'm talking just so they don't hear the echo. Thank you. Um, somebody asked, is the book that you were just talking about, Healing is in the Spirit? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, Annette, it is. Okay, Janelle, I'm gonna kind of skip over your question real fast, just so I can do the one that um, is directly mindfulness related, and then I'll get back to that one if that's okay. Um, so Odilakachi said, what's up, Omi? How has mindfulness improved your overall ability to navigate in mental health practice? Peace, Odie. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> He went to family with me. Thank you for joining. Um, so mindfulness has influenced my practice of mental health in just learning to separate what my clients are experiencing 
and um, what I am experiencing because the work that we do is so heavy and it's really hard sometimes not to take that work home with you if you don't know how to. So just uh, just learning to separate that energy. This is theirs and this is mine. Um, and I definitely share all of these practices with my clients. Um, we do energy healing and um, we, we do uh, breath work and we use binaural beats and um, music in our sessions. And I just find a way to dress it up with clinical language, um, but it's spirituality. So I just kind of don't separate what has now become a lifestyle for me from my clinical practice. Thank you. I hope that was helpful um, to you. <laughs> and so back to Janelle's question. Um, can you mute yourself? <laughs> Janelle said, hey, sis, what are some practices we can do in order to identify which of our chakras are unaligned? So there are so many different practices that you can do to do that. Um, I personally have an energy healer that I go to. He's based in Tallahassee, Florida, and his name is Shay English, but I'm connected to a lot of healers um, that are based in different cities, and um, maybe that's something that I could do, just add a list of healers that uh, folks can go to um, just to become more aware. Because I just think that chakras and trying to cleanse your chakras uh, for me, I think that it's important to have someone who is experienced guiding you on how to do that. But there are resources that you can you can use to do self work or self chakra cleansing. Um, let's see, this is literally my library. I have some books over there. But um, the New Human, which is it's called, it's a book on quantum touch, um, which is. Um, just energy medicine. It's kind of what we were doing earlier, manipulating our energy to so that we can experience it and feel it. So there's this great book called Quantum Touch by Dr. Thank you. <laughs> by Dr. Richard Gordon, The New Human and Quantum Touch. This book is excellent. It's awesome. After I um, had a few sessions with honors. You probably can't see it. There we go. After I had a few sessions with Jay English or honors, who's also a professor at FAMU, um, I was able to, um, begin engaging in just self energy practices and just knowing which chakras were overactive and underactive. And it's just very elementary in such a way that it just takes you through the basic steps on how to um, generate that energy and feel that energy. So The New Human by Dr. Richard Gordon for feeling out and just seeing where your chakras are overactive or deficient. I can't hear you, by the way. I should unmute myself. <laughs> Thank you. Um, another question I was saying has to do with, had to do kind of with what you touched on about finding teachers um, and healers as resources that can kind of walk you uh, through that. And then Trayvon asked generally if you have any energetic advice on addictions and temptation. Unmute yourself. Okay, my uh, my response was that is such an awesome question um, because addiction looks different. Addiction is not just addiction to drugs and alcohol. It can be addictive behaviors, maybe addiction to getting into relationships quickly, or um, addiction just to any type of um, just negative behaviors, maybe. So I would say. My, my number one response for addictive behavior is to create a plan um, to address it, whether that is through 
um, breath work or meditation and to really stick to and be disciplined about it. So 21 days, they say it takes 21 days to create a new habit. So be so disciplined and vehement in your decision to um, decrease that habit or to completely eliminate that habit by creating a plan that will counteract it and just really, really stick to it and get support. Um, lean on your fa friends and family for support. Maybe get an accountability partner. So someone that's checking in with you, asking you if you engaged in your practice, in your practices, or if you went to therapy, or if you went to your AA meeting, whatever it may be. Um, but just being really, really disciplined and committed to your health and being honest with yourself. Is this something that is destructive to my person? Can I die from this? And then being honest with yourself about that. Mute. <laughs> Thank you, Omi. Um, getting a lot of thanks for sharing your insight and for sharing your story as well. It's my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> so those are the main questions that kind of came through and I wanted to take a pause to just um, get some of those answered. Uh, if anyone has another question right now, you can go ahead and throw it out. But I'm going to give it back to you to continue on with your presentation. Those are some great questions. Thank you. Alrighty, so we were we left off um, in the middle of the discussion of becoming the witness. So um, yes, let's see. I think we were actually we were we were done with this slide, so we can move on to mindfulness and thoughts. So, like energy attracts like energy, and your thoughts are vibrations. So what you are, what are you vibrating or attracting into your life? Is it suffering? Is it debt? Is it peace or joy? So learning to be aware of your mental vibrations or your thoughts or that energy um, at will will transform your life. Being able to recognize I'm not in a positive state right now. You know, if you wake up and you're saying this is just not a great day, I'm so upset, you won't have a great day. You are going to hit every red light on the way to work or to school or to the daycare, you know? So when you wake up when you, and you're in that state of energy, change the story. Tell yourself, well, you know what? I feel this way. I'm a witness to that, but I'm gonna have a great day despite this. I'm gonna make every great, every effort today to turn this into a great day. So just being aware um, can, can really do some amazing things uh, for your life. So let's see, how are we doing with time? Okay, so maybe just instead of making an entire list of emotions, we can just do a quick exercise on mindfulness and thoughts. Maybe just write down one emotion that you are in the habit of manifesting. So it could be anger, fear, worry, grief, sadness, dissatisfaction, embarrassment, anxiety, whatever it is, just write down that emotion. And then note the situation in which that emotion occurs. And you can maybe do a complete list later on post uh, this presentation. But note what's happening. If you are someone who overspends and then you later experience worry because you're worrying about your finances and how you're going to um, pay other bills. And then that worry then changes into anger. That's an example of noting the situation in which these emotions are coming up. But it doesn't have to be just involving yourself. It could be involving your partner, your, um, your parent, your children. And so the third step is to change the story by creating a plan and a positive um, outcome. So an example that we talked about earlier might be, I will create a budget and I'm going to stick to it and I'm going to exercise, exercise self-control. And this is actually like my life. <laughs> this is something that I am working on. Um, 
so I'll give us maybe just 30 seconds to do that. But So this is just one mindfulness exercise that you can do to just take a look at your thoughts and identify the root of those thoughts that are just recurring and not speaking life into your plans, into your goals. And um, one of the ways that you can do that is by changing the story. So we talked about this earlier, but now we're putting it on paper and putting something on paper is transformative within itself because you see it and it becomes real. So next, we'll talk about visualization and mindfulness. So images are the means through which the energy of our being is harnessed, is harnessed. So images, they are literally the strongest manipulators of the life force. So just really be mindful of the images that you are absorbing before you fall asleep, what you see when you wake up, and during your meditations, what you're meditating on. So if you're a person who wakes up and the first thing you do is grab your phone that's a habit that you definitely want to break. Um, something that you might want to do instead is if you are someone who is spiritual or religious, you might want to pray or you might want to engage in meditation or just take five minutes to visualize how you want your day to go, you know, or if you think you just or you just know you're going to have a tough day that day, visualize yourself making it smiling and having a great day. And I know that it might sound very repetitive and um, maybe even basic, but these are some simple things that can increase your joy so significantly. Um, and just, you might even wanna try a TV fast, just limiting the amount of TV that, you're, that you watch. Um, with Netflix and Hulu, like this new binging thing is like so addicting <laughs> because you can, you can watch series eight, seven seasons of TV shows back to back. And we do that while we're doing our work. It's just it's just background noise, but we're hearing that, we're taking it into our spirit, it's coming into our dreams. Like if you're dreaming about these TV shows or Instagram comedians like Haha ha Davis and Jessica Hilarious, then you're taking in way too much of that. So um, yes, just try to limit what you are seeing and bring in more positive images um, into your into your awareness. So the next exercise, um, instead of situations, let's focus on just one situation. I just want or would like for us to make a list of situations in which we tend to imagine a negative outcome. And then the second step is to note the emotions that are invoked in each situation. And the last step is to visualize your person smiling, responding peacefully, and experiencing a positive outcome. So an example may be if you know that seeing a person, it could be a family member, a professor, um, a coworker, whomever, that person, they just, they get you upset. You feel that energy just rising up from the feet, blood starting to boil. That's anger, that's frustration, that's discomfort. So those are the emotions, take note of that. And then visualize your person, seeing that person, smiling, having a positive interaction. And if you continuously do that, if you take these positive thoughts and experiences into meditation, it will actualize in real life. Our thoughts, these images, they create intentions instantly. And they happen in the spirit world. What you think and ask for, it immediately happens in the spirit world. But because of time and space, it takes some time for it to happen for some of us in the physical world. Some people just have so much ashe um, that they're able to just speak something and it just happens that quickly. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's just another exercise that you can engage in to um, 
to just do a mindfulness cleanse of of um of negative situations um and using the power of visualization to transform those emotions that are not helping you that are not um feeding your your joy or your health at all so i guess i'll just you know give it another 30 seconds if you are wrapping up this online stuff can be tough sometimes because I don't know where you are <laughs> with um, the practice. So if anything, this exercise will be available to you and you can do this at any time with more time. Um, and it is, it's a very powerful exercise, especially if you take this into your visualization, into your meditation. Um, like we said earlier, for 21 days, um, yeah, you will definitely notice that you can be around that person or whatever the situation was for you that you imagined um you'll notice that there will be improvement uh that's just it's universal law it, it will happen so mindfulness and words we all know that word is bond so words have ashe they have spiritual power they have the power to make things happen we've heard this you know the sayings um that i'm going to speak that in this into existence because we can we actually have the power to speak things into existence, to speak our reality into existence. And words, again, they are the commands that govern our subconscious mind. So that's why we are working on reprogramming our mind um, and aligning our, ourselves and our spirits with positive, affirming uh, thoughts. So we wanna speak love into our reality and just be mindful that your words are your daily mantra. So the next, the next topic is mindfulness and manifestation. Pretty much, I don't know if you all have noticed, but everything is interconnected and it's pretty much the same thing, just in a different expression, whether it's speaking, thinking, it's, it all has the same fundamental principles. Um, so if we look at this uh, diagram here, so we have negative emotions, pretty much they devitalize your life force, which is why we talked about um, sickness being a symptom of stress or negative emotions because your life force is devitalized. It's not where it should be to, to create a healing state in your body. And so when your life force is devitalized, you manifest negative experiences, which may occur in different ways. It may be worry, it may be grief, um, depression or sadness, or just manifesting. You might lose money, you know, it could be just anything. Um, so it's just important just to remember that, you know, your life force is that division of your spirit that is directly responsible for the manifestations of the events in your body and in your lives. So the vitality and the capability of your life force is dependent on your emotional states. So negative emotions or stressful reactions, they devitalize and they create that imbalance in the life force. And what that does is it significantly impacts the manifestation of your spiritual power and of your ashe. So energy invigorating activities such as qigong which is to me, it's just like this beautiful, it's pretty much, it's yoga, but it's more of a dance um, based on my experience. Um, and they're very similar practices, but Qigong is geared specifically at releasing energetic blockages that are held in the body to facilitate healing. Um, 
So qigong, taking different herbs, um, what else? Breath work, mantras. There's so many different things that you can do to generate your life force energy and to revitalize your person. So if you are feeling sad, that's also, you know, a manifestation of your life force being low. And that might be the universe saying you are overworking yourself. Slow down and do some energy work so that you can perform at an optimum level. So next we are going to discuss, again, just mindfulness and manifestation. So again, your life force is guided by your logical convictions. So your behavior is controlled. We talked about addictions. Your That addictive behavior that we discussed earlier is controlled by your life force. That means that your life force is not in a healthy state at this time. And so your life force is controlled by the mind, which means that there needs to be some mental work that needs to be done, some reprogramming of the mind. So that behavior is controlled by life force. Life force is controlled by the mind. And that change that you want to happen is rooted in this mental work, in the energy work that we are talking about. So what you believe to be true about yourself, is it actually true or is it false? Are those thoughts you know, that you are thinking, are they rooted in African-centered thought? Are they rooted in African spiritual expression? What's guiding your convictions? We all breathe the air of the European, you know, culture, but are you making an effort every day to align yourself with who you know you are to be? And who you should be. And if you don't know who you should be, there's, again, we talked about there are people that you can go to, spiritual leaders, there's readings that can be done, energy um, work that can be had where you can learn about where there are energy deficiencies in your person. Or you can talk to talk to your, your Ori or to your spirit, go into the dream world and ask, you know, whomever you believe in, the ancestors, God, yourself, what do I need to do? And eventually you will get an answer because that's universal law as well. So again, your reality is a manifestation of your thoughts. So a thought is energy or light that has been shaped by consciousness. So there's light and then there's the shaping of light by consciousness. And um, that is, that is the, um, <clears throat> sorry about that. And that is the. Oh, goodness, I lost my train of thought. Okay, let me just jump back in. So, again, so we are we're dynamic beings of light. And in each moment, we have to inform the light that flows through us. We have to assign the energy and the thoughts and intention. Um, and so, again, like we talked about earlier, what we feel, what we think, how we behave, what we value, all of that, how we live our lives, it reflects the way that we are shaping the light that flows through us. So we can change the way that we shape the light that flows through us through mentalism, through changing our consciousness. And we do this, for example, when we challenge a negative pattern such as anger, and we consciously choose to, to replace that with compassion. So someone is just not having a great day and you're out in the world and you experience a negative interaction with someone else. So instead of now, taking on anger because they were rude or nasty towards you, have compassion. Send that person love and light and you continue to have a great day, you know? Um, so that's a different way to just shift the energy that is flowing to you in that moment. Okay. So I think the easiest way to discuss the law of rhythm is by just telling yourself that's the balance. So the law of rhythm, I thought it was important to include this because it will not always be, no matter how much spiritual work you do, there will be a time you will experience the balance. You will experience that pendulum swing backwards and, um, and there's some sort of failure or maybe negative experience. But we see that in nature. 
you know, we see the waves going back and forth. We see that in the rise and fall of the greatest empires. We see it in business cycles. We see it in the sway of our own thoughts from positive to negative. So that is also just universal law. And it's not something for you to become fearful about or discouraged about. Instead, that's a call from the universe to show up for yourself, to engage in the practices that you have been um, learning about and studying and not responding in this situation and just not giving into it and just completely hitting rock bottom, but saying, oh, okay, I'm observing this. This is what's happening. This is just natural law. This is universal law. And what I know to be true is that the pendulum will swing back and that there will be upward motion and that there will be um, greatness once again, because that's just universal law. So I did want to just mention that. And I think another way that one of my teachers call or describes this is that even birds have to fly down to the bottom of the Amazon or to the forest to drink water. So you can be flying high and really positive and in a great place, but you got to come back down at some point, you know, to get what you need. And sometimes we need certain experiences to um, to keep us balanced. So I did want to mention that. And gratitude, say thank you. Gratitude can shift our focus from lack and powerlessness to appreciation and gratefulness and thankfulness. So give thanks to God, to the universe, to the how, to the higher power, whomever um, you believe in. Um, I know that the higher power has many names: uh, Oludumare, uh, the Neter, whatever, whomever you you believe in. Um, give thanks to to that power to the powers that be for the situation that you're experiencing um because it's genuinely an opportunity for you to have growth and development and some affirmations um that you can just speak into your person are i am joy i am great i am healer i i know that everything is in alignment I know that the universe is creating and shifting in my favor. I listen reflectively to others. I am present. I embrace love. I am light. I am confident. I am creative. I am grounded. So those are just some affirmations that you can just add to your daily practice. Something that um, Iyanla Van Sant, she's a life coach. Um, many of you might know her. She has a show on Oprah's network. I don't really like the show, but she has this really great exercise um, called 50 Days of Affirmation. And for 50 days, you write down I am affirmations, just like this. I am present. I am confident. And the goal is to stick to your agreement to do those affirmations for 50 days straight. It doesn't matter if you're on the 48th day. If you didn't do your affirmations on the 49th day, you have to restart from day one. So if you miss a day on the 15th day, the 30th, 49th, whatever, you have to start over because it's a, the, the, the exercise is told. It's also about affirming amazing um, emotions and experiences and manifestations into your life, but it's also teaching you to stick to your agreement. Um, so I think that that's just a really awesome exercise that folks can do. And some soul care suggestions that are really simple, drink water. People do not drink water. Drink water. Uh, meditate even if it's just for five minutes a day. Take deep breaths. Exercise, especially in the morning. Help someone. Many of us are in the, the helping service career field. Um, and it's, it's, it's joy for me, it's a heart space field. So if, even if I'm not having a great day, just going into session with clients, I'm just like, wow, what was I mad about again? Um, or upset about, or what, why was I feeling sad? So helping people can be so transformative. Um, take yourself out on a date, you know, um, unplug for an hour, put the phone down. Um, Brittany Griffin has this amazing quote um, it's actually a seven word healing statement that she created a few years ago for community healing days. 
um, if she, I hope she's comfortable with me sharing it. I'm giving you credit, sis. It is silence gives birth to clarity and understanding. Silence gives birth to clarity and understanding. And I've never forgotten it. I think she might have said that in 2015 and it stuck with me because silence is so powerful. So talk fast. Um, just saying, I'm going to take the day to just not talk to anyone and just read, journal, go within, meditate, read my ancestor shrine, read my ori, whatever the case may be. Do um, maybe take an herbal bath or whatever you engage in for self-care. Uh, you might want to do that while, in, while doing a talk fast. Um, another thing is just overthinking, you know. Um, I think that most of us in, in AB side, we, we might tend to be over analytical because um, many of us are in postgraduate programs and PhD programs. So there is just this automatic, just analytical piece of us, you know. So just try not to bring that, um, this helpful experience for exams and PhDs and um, academia into your personal life because um, there can be some detriments there. And then don't compare yourself to anyone. What's for you is for you and no one can take that away from you. And just believe that and know that you are on your own individual path and your journey doesn't look like anyone else's. Another thing, eat some fruits and vegetables, forgive yourself and others. Watch less television. Um, be selfish if you need to be and say exactly what you mean. So in conclusion, no story or intention is more powerful than the ones that we tell ourselves about who we are, how the world sees us and what we are capable of. So be mindful of that. Remain aware of your thoughts and consciously accept the healing that it offers. Remain conscious of the words that you use to describe yourself and experiences and other people and just make time for your soul care because truly nothing else is more important than taking care of yourself nothing else is more important than your spiritual development nothing nothing else not money not the degrees you coming here to be a divine being is the most important thing that you um you incarnated to do and everything else is just a blessing and sharing that gift with everyone else is just a blessing, but you have to take care of you first. And um, yes, my references again was Healing in the Spirit and my direct experience and many, many, many lectures and classes. So let me go back to the screen share, turn that off, trying to. <laughs> I think I turned it off, right? Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a lot of information, a lot of um, good information that touched me and everybody in the comments was um, talking about that and asking questions. So I'm going to get into some of the questions. Okay. I'm trying to make sure I, I get back to where we had stopped at with the questions. Oh, um, so Brittany has a, had a question when you were talking about uh, our thoughts, like m our mindfulness and thoughts and the power of our words and stuff like that. Um, she said, do you believe we are our thoughts if so how would you approach a client who may suffer from troubling or disturbing thoughts that interfere with their daily life um, and context for this is a um, client that is diagnosed with ocd so when you're ready to answer it you can just go ahead and unmute yourself Yes, I do believe that we are our thoughts. Um, 
because we manifest our reality from our thoughts and from what we believe to be true. So I think that's why it's important to encourage our clients and ourselves to reprogram the thoughts that are encouraging behaviors like OCD. So um, I don't know what might have happened with that client to develop those um, obsessive behaviors, um, but maybe getting to the root of that and separating, I mean, I can't say that there was a false situation because it could have been very real for that client. But um, yeah, I think that I'm not sure that affirmations would work for someone who has OCD. That might definitely take some um, some some deep clinical work. Um, but um, so did I answer that question? It was how would we address? Let me put it on mute so you can. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. Part of her um, question is, and she, she so she kind of texted me <laughs> to give more context. <laughs> part of the question is, so yeah, I also don't know what may be going on with the clients, but like you were saying, it it probably takes a lot more deep rooted work of picking apart those things. Cause say like if it's connected to um, trauma or like whatever the onset may be, the affirmations may not work for someone who has not been engaging in and been engaging in that spiritual work. So um, according to her, the thoughts are so disturbing that the client is not able to move past that to do the work that needs to be done. And it's a sister. <laughs> wow, that's that is very, very tough. Um, I would I would definitely encourage that client to it's tough for me because my immediate thought right now is what is happening with this person spiritually. Um, am I off of mute? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, yeah, that's where my mind goes. It's like what is happening spiritually with this person that this is a presentation for them. And I know that we all can't divine during sessions and, you know, encourage different herbs and spiritual baths, but that's where I'm, my mind just went straight there that that is what, um, what that person might need, but um, yeah, I would I would encourage that client to. I don't have an answer. I don't know. Maybe it's just I just don't know. <laughs> that that is tough. That is tough. She's having some disturbing thoughts. Um, I will continue to affirm um, her, and maybe have her do the affirmations, the fifty days of affirmations. Um, and visualize her person um, having opposite experiences from whatever those disturbing thoughts are. I think that would be where I would start just based on what I know about the client. Okay. Thank you for that input. I think it also kind of ties into how you were talking about earlier, how we, we breathe in this um, European air of all this stuff. So for some people who may be practicing in spaces that are not so welcoming of um, some of our spiritual practices, it makes it a little bit more challenging to be able to do that, the full extent of that work with, with clients, but probably adding in some of those things in small ways um, may be helpful for them. And then they can also continue to do the work outside of session. We provide resources for them. I agree. It is tough. Um, so some of the ways that I'm able to kind of bring in these like practices into the clinical work is by having offering tea to my clients if I know that they and I'll tell them, oh, this is you know this is rose petals and sage and it will help you, you know, just letting them know this is what this is and this is the medicinal properties of this herb. And they might not go out and purchase it, but at least I was able to offer it to them during this one day during the week. But um, I completely agree. Um, I don't work for a private practice and I have to abide by the ethical and European standards of the agency. So I get it. I hear you. It is tough trying to incorporate or integrate alternative therapies in spaces that um, are not welcoming of them yet. This next question 
is oh from Shania. She said, "Does what you eat have anything to do with mindfulness or healing as a whole?" Unmute yourself. I was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, it definitely does. There's a really great book. It's by Dr. Um, uh, either Layla Lala Africa, Dr. Africa, and it's called African Holistic Health. Um, and it actually breaks down your cravings. Um, so I know for me, I love chips. Like I'm such a chip person because of the crunch. And what he says is the psychology behind that is anxiety. So, um, so yeah, so there are different ways to explore your cravings and your likes and dislikes for, for food from a psychological view. And then also, yeah, food definitely changes your, um, your joy in your experience. I've been vegan for about, um, I think about two or three years now, and I was vegetarian first. And I definitely feel more vitalized. I feel more alive. Um, I don't want to, this is just not to offend anyone who eats meat, but you know, when you, when you eat meat who that are treated the way that they're treated, um, we talked about energy. Energy can be neither created nor destroyed, nor destroyed. So if imagine this pig or cow or chicken that is terrified, you know, in this dark place, dark factory, and you're eating that, that anxiety and that fear, you know, and it goes into your spirit. So um, that's just some things to think about. And maybe that just means you want to pray over your food and pahat or release certain energies that are um, in the meat that you eat, but definitely um, fruits and vegetables and especially green vegetables um, are so vitalizing towards your life force energy. Um, yeah, mindful eating is definitely a practice. trying to see if if I'm missing any questions there was one that I saw uh someone was checking the yoga that the form of yoga that you talked about was it qigong or um did you mention a, a different one so qigong is a body movement therapy that is um separate from yoga um it's amazing. You can Google it. Qigong, Q I space G O N G, Qigong. There are so many different videos online. And then there's also um, Qigong. I like to do Ra Qigong, which is a, a sequence that Rauna for Amen, who wrote The Healing in, in the Spirit book, and he's also the author of Merunatir, the Merunatir series that many people. Um, may have may or may not be aware of uh but i can definitely give the link for that and it will come with the dvd and um it's just it's amazing so qigong and then the yoga that we can engage in for vitalizing or revitalizing our person it's kundalini yoga and that's also um just something that you can research online and find books to learn more about kundalini yoga Thank you. So there's questions um, about whether this would will stay up. So right now it's live, uh, but the YouTube video will stay up and you'll be able to access it um, through the same link that you were able to access it through when you got in, or you can just come to the AB side YouTube page and access it that way. Um, and you always have access to Omi. <laughs> via email or social media and I'll share her information. Um, you can also find it uh, in the yeah in the description box after we're done. Does anyone have other questions? You're getting a lot of positive affirmations in the chat. <laughs> 
That's love. I can't wait to read. Megan Shrine. You have any last thoughts, homie? Um, I think my last thoughts, like I said, um, during the last slide is just we committed to a soul king. I truly believe that nothing else is more important. So, um, yes, I was just saying, just being really committed to your soul care, whether that means creating a morning routine or an evening routine, being mindful about your eating, as we talked about earlier, um, mindful about your thoughts, about the words that you're speaking. Just be very intentional um, because you can have all the money in the world and all of the degrees and the titles and the certifications, but what does that mean if you are not well at the end of the day? So um, that's just my final thought, just to be well and to really take care of yourself and do your work. Oh, thank you. Um, I agree. And so Annette said that she's going to start her 50 day of affirmation. So that's a step for her into um, soul caring. Uh, oh, I see there is a question. So someone um, kind of like stepped in at a different point in the presentation and was asking if you talked about uh, wound care. And if you could just say a little bit about that, I know that's a loaded. <laughs> yes, wow, wound care. Um, wound care is so important because our womb is the center of our creativity. Um, yeah, I don't know where should I even begin. Um, so for wound care, some daily quick things that you can do. How dark how is it? Tea? Um, it's mostly you know, have um pow darko yellow um, i'm gonna ask you to kind of repeat what you said because it kind of it lagged for a second no problem i was saying that some basic things that i can just like quickly touch on is um pow darko tea you take that every day um, how dark go again you can find it in Whole Foods or Natural Food Store and it's spelled P-A-U um, with an apostrophe D-A-R-C-O uh, Pow Darko and nettle tea um, and what those two teas do is that it um, it decreases menstrual cramps um, it restores balance within um, the womb space so if you're experiencing fibroids or cysts or any of those other um, reproductive diseases, it's really awesome for that. And then there's another herbal supplement that comes in the form of liquid, and it's called um, uh, uh, Essence of Fertility. And then within the name, you may think that it's just about fertility, but this is so powerful, this Essence of Fertility, that the women that have taken it, my family members, I've taken it myself to eliminate some um, reproductive issues that I've had, it can eliminate cervical cancer. I don't. If you are very very strict and you follow the dietary um, the dietary suggestions and you're doing the qigong that's associated with it, um, but it can eliminate um, the fibroids, um, cervical cancer um, diseases, infertility issues. It's called essence of fertility, um, and the Chef Aki sells it, and so does the Indigenous Medical Association, Indigenous Medical Association. So um, so those are some things that you can take for it, but you can also talk to your womb 
be gentle to your womb. If you need to apologize to your womb, apologize to your womb for some maybe behaviors that you've engaged in. That's another way that you can heal um, dancing, um, doing just sensual work, being very Oshun, very head of root, embracing your sensuality. That also puts you in a healing state. Um, um, so yeah, I think those are my quick womb wellness thoughts. But we do have a group on Facebook. It's called, um, I think, Omiwali Sisterhood of Womb Wellness. We can put the link in the description box. Um, and we talk a lot about womb wellness in that group. Um, so we can get into it there. Because I can talk about womb wellness <laughs> for a little minute. But, um, I hope that that helps. <laughs> Yeah, when I saw that, yeah, when I saw that, I was like, like, <laughs> yeah, so, presentation, presentation. Yes, that is a whole nother presentation. <laughs> but it's a great question. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question. Thanks for the question. Um, wait, meet yourself. Wait, meet yourself. Another question. So, hey, Max. <laughs> Um, Max asked if you could talk a little bit about some best practices to use um, to be disciplined when it comes to managing time. Okay, so with managing time or time management, I definitely recommend using a journal or some sort of um, like an agenda, writing everything down or using your phone if you're not someone who actually likes to write things down, but using your phone, putting the reminders in so you know, okay, I have this to do and then this is next. Um, but for me, it just feels great to write things down and to, like we talked about the other day, Robina, writing things down, putting that line through it and a check, and it just feels so good to see it that you have completed it. Um, but with time management, I think that's the best thing that I can I can offer is to write it down or type it so that you can see it and you know that you are aware of everything that needs to be done. Because I think I what I have found and observed is that people um, become lax and they just allow things to spiral out of control because they don't see all of what needs to be done. But seeing it for me um, is helpful. And if it's overwhelming for you, then maybe have it like one page after the other, you know, so that way, you know, you check one thing off and you turn the page and you're moving on to the next task. Um, but yeah. Or no. Ooh, I hope that was helpful. Any last questions? Okay, and so someone had asked about um, if Omi can share the PowerPoint slides. So yeah, she's gonna, um, I guess like extract that and put it up and I can send it in an email to you all. So I don't think how this would work. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll put the link. I'll, I'll put the link. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say if they subscribe on my website, I can send it out to all of the email subscribers. It's up to, that's one way if we can get it done. <laughs> So if you just like to omiwali.com, O-M-I-W-A-L-I, and subscribe, um, I'll send the email out to everyone tomorrow, at least by noon. Um, so that gives anyone time to, to um, subscribe between tonight and tomorrow morning. And I'll send that out first thing, well, in the noon. <laughs> Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> um, that helps. And also, yeah, so she'll send that out. Um, this will stay up. I'll add links to what we talked about and some of the resources. Um, I'll talk to her just 
to remind myself of what um, she did cover and then make a list of that stuff and put it down below. Um, yeah. Announcement. Um, so thank you for tuning in to um, the podcast and for supporting ABSI or the Association of Black Psychologists in this way. Uh, we do have a webinar coming up in January. Um, we don't have the date solidified for that, but it's going to be on a Tuesday um, evening as well. And even if you're not able to make it, you'll be able to um, get the link and tune in afterwards. Um, we also have a podcast. Our podcast is Rooted. Um, Evan, who is our Eastern Regional Rep, um, has been doing a great job with that. Um, and so if you check out the podcast Rooted, I'll also link that. Um, we have students who uh, speak on there just about their experiences um, as well. And so being able to kind of get their perspectives. Um, and if you also have feedback of anything that you want to hear or have us present on or um, resources that you all need from us um, and ways that we can help you, we're definitely open to that as well. Um, is it possible to get CEUs for this fantastic webinar? You know what? These are things that <laughs> we need to hear from the people. <laughs> oh, me gasped. You guys can't see her face, but she gasped. Um, I'm going to actually look into that. There is a person who handles this, or people who handle, handle the CEUs for ABSI, um, so that we can be able to look into being able to do something like that because there's a whole process for it but that would be amazing we need that where do we find the podcast the podcast can be found on soundcloud um itunes i feel like there's another place as well but those are the biggest places i can think of yeah soundcloud and itunes Um, also, I just realized I, I never introduced myself. I'm Robina. I'm the communications chair for the Association of Black Psychologists Student Circle. Um, so most of the time when y'all get emails from me, the, um, they're coming through like with whatever has been sent and resources that we want to share with you all. So um, membership, sign up is right around the corner um, so to be able to get more access to resources like that uh, we want you all to definitely stay in the loop so be on the lookout for that and i'll add that in um, the description as well somebody said spotify i'm, not, I'm actually i'm sorry y'all i'm not sure if it's on spotify it's called rooted i'm kind of waiting for evan to say something <laughs> about whether it is Um, yeah, we'll let you, I'll let you know. I'm actually going to go through the names of everybody, everybody who was on here and, um, just like make it into an email so that I can get you those resources as well. So that's all I have for y'all today. And I think that's all Omi has to. Yeah. I just want to mention the retreat. That's the very last thing. Yes. Yes, and then, okay, so every Monday and Tuesday, before I get to the retreat, every Monday and Tuesday, I offer um, a free mindfulness workshop, mantra workshop, but that in, it includes mindfulness. Um, the mantras change um, just based on whatever um, spirit tells me we need to work on that day, and they are at 7 a.m. on a Monday, 10 a.m. on a Tuesday. So uh, more information about that can be found on my website. O-M-I-W-A-L-I.com and just select events and workshops. You just select the link on Zoom and you'll be right in or you can call in if you're if you happen to be traveling. Um, so I just wanted to mention that it's completely free. And then the next thing is um, the Soul Care Retreat 2. We are having one in January, but we sold out the one in May. We meaning the Omiwali Center um, is a six night seven day cruise we're going to san juan st martin st kitts antigua st lucia barbados 
six nights, you literally wake up every day in a new country. It's going to be so amazing. Um, there's awesome facilitators there. I don't want to take up too much time, but you can read more in detail about the retreat. Again, O-M-I-W-A-L-I.com. Um, if you just type that in, that's the first thing that will pop up is information about the retreat. The ethos of the retreat is love. We are just embracing love, talking about love, how to identify what love is, what it isn't, what threats it can still look like. And I'm just excited to be a part of this space. So I hope that you can join us. And that is officially it for me. And I'm just grateful that you all joined us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Um, what's my thing? Eastern time. Um, hey, Erica. Oh, hey, Erica. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm assuming it is Eastern time because um, Omi lives on the coast. So sorry to y'all Pacific timers, but yeah, it's Eastern time. All right, thanks, everyone. I'm going to stop the broadcast now so you all don't continue to see us. <laughs> in this way and um we'll talk to y'all virtually um and connect on the next podcast yes this is a great community um like janae said so keep in touch and um annette might need some accountability partners for her uh 50 days of affirmation so somebody reach out <laughs> to her bye y'all